Today, we're gonna to show you how to get the most bang for your buck before you trade it in. I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. We're gonna be washing it, decontaminating it, and giving it very light polish. We're not going after defects. We're not doing paint correction in any way, shape, or form. We're giving it some gloss, and that gloss is all that dealership sees. And when you go to buy a car at a dealership, unless you're a detailer, you're not inspecting it with a microscope if there's nothing that jumps out at you. If there are scratches that jump out at you, then yes, you're gonna be focused and looking closer. And that's what a pre-sale detail is about, to keep you five feet away and not have to go in and look at something closer. Lean in on this wisdom because it's what the dealership knows about their customers, right? Exactly. What can I get away with? What do I need to work on and what can I not touch that will impress someone enough to get the deal done. Exactly. All so, right. we'll get going. I've got all clean 15 to one in here. So what's the principle here? Just a nice deep clean of the wheels. Nice clean of the wheels. Get in the wheel wells. All clean is our all purpose cleaner. It's in a foamer here. Foaming I like to do because it cleans well. Every time a bubble bursts of that all clean, you're getting new all clean on the surface, as you've said many times. Uh, but you could spray this on if you had just a spray bottle. I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone who may not have all the fancy tricks and tools and gadgets. Although a foamer like this is pretty nice to have. You don't need the foam. You don't need the foam, but you actually use less product with a foamer. So there are some advantages to having one. Now on the front end of this Cadillac, it's accumulated a lot of insects. So I'm gonna pre-spray the all clean on the insects as well. The Incredible Suds does a great job, but we have the all clean, we have the foamer, it's pumped up, why not? I like all clean as a pre-treat for bug guts all day long. Yeah. And now Nick, go have some fun. Incredible Suds time? Yes sir. Did I get you with any foam? A little bit. Felt like it was snowing out here. Not too bad on a summer day, but you could be watching this in December for all I know. So you're taking care of the wheels. Yep. I, uh, I can work on the other side. And while we're doing the wheels, we're letting the incredible suds dwell. It is breaking down the dirt on the surface. This vehicle, obviously to us, went through a car wash on a regular basis. And in doing so, the back end never actually got cleaned. So the incredible suds will be breaking all of that down. And I like what Cadillac did with these wheels. They painted the barrels black. This rear wheel well is quite exposed, so I'll give it a little brush while I'm here with the incredible suds. Now one additional thing I'm gonna to do to the wheels while we're letting that soak is a bit of iron remover. going to deep clean the wheels a little more, get that iron residue off of them. And while I'm here, have you subscribed to the channel? Have you hit the notification bell? Or even left us a comment? If you haven't, please go ahead and do that. Doesn't cost you anything, takes a little bit of time, and for us, it's a really big bonus. Nick, before you rinse that off, I'm just going to do one last little thing. Okay. I think we had a bit of incredible suds on these. Yeah, it's getting pretty soapy, huh? Yeah. There you go, sir. It's all yours. Ivan, I did the rinsing. I'm gonna let you do the foaming honors. Well, there we go. So this is a quick foam. We're not going for a thick, luxurious foam here. We're just giving us a little extra protection when we take the wash mitt to it. Yeah, so one thing you can do is if, let's say, you went crazy and you use the entire foam can and you've got a little bit of foam left, you just add water to that so you don't need to go for the luxurious foam. Right. But we've got a full foam can in here. But just a trick for you at home. As you can see, I barely used a couple ounces out of it. Not a lot of foam was used. I've already start, started the, uh, the contact wash here with Incredible Suds. Right. Now since we're gonna be polishing this, we're gonna give it a little treatment with the 
decontamination towel at the same time before rinsing it off. So I'm gonna follow behind Nick with a perforated synthetic decontamination towel, a couple sprays on the towel, one on the panel, and off we go. Why are we decontaminating this paint, Ivan, if we're gonna be polishing it? To make the polishing that much more effective. And amazingly, if you don't decontaminate the paint, it feels a little rough. If you polish over that roughness, you get shiny roughness. It still feels rough. So you could kind of maybe get away with that if you're selling it to a dealer. I'm thinking of the what can I get away with, but I know it's not the proper way. No, and the extra you know, five or 10 minutes spent claying is a good investment. It will make the polishing faster, easier, your pads will last longer, and you're gonna get a better result. It'll, it'll make the paint brighter even before you polish it. Right. Um, I haven't done the roof yet. I always forget to do the roof first. Right. So maybe I'll hop on and do that. Yep. Let me finish the hood, just for my own edification here. And then I'll hit the other horizontal surface. And normally we say the bottom of the doors are the most contaminated part of the vehicle. In this one, because of these running boards, they're actually very contaminant free, which is a nice change of pace. So do they serve a purpose? Yes, they do. I feel like we're hitting this uh, Cadillac with machine efficiency, Ivan. Well, it's the way it should be. A lot of professional detailers, unfortunately, downplay the importance of the dealership detailer. And dealership detailers deserve a lot of credit. Oh, they learn exactly what they need to do and do well and what they can get away with leaving be. Um, leaving be. Not leaving alone, but leaving it be, knowing when it's not worth spending the time on. Right. And they will touch every area of the vehicle. They do a great job. The only area where they really are let down on is the polishing aspect. And honestly, it's not the fault of the person. It's they're not given the tools and the time to do the job. One thing that every dealership detailer knows is that the driver area is crucial right whether it's the interior and the cockpit yeah or the pillars here the door handle area uh, we're talking about the gas cap area um, and then in the rear those, those in the hatch it seems like that's an area that, that folks tend to notice as well yeah uh, you'd think the roof would be something people really pay attention to but from my experience, not as much. I don't know. You, feel free to totally disregard everything I just said, Ivan. What are your thoughts on that? Unfortunately, people don't look after their roofs very well. And at the dealership level, they're not really getting up there to look at the roof either. What about the hood? The hood, it's the most seen part of the car. When it's in that front facing lineup, it needs to look spectacular. The incredible Suds is giving us great lubrication here, along with the iron remover. So we're mechanically and chemically decontaminating the paint. Now on a black vehicle like this, are you gonna see the uh, iron contamination? No. But we know that we're getting rid of it. Now this roof, I'm guessing by the hood, it's gonna be a little contaminated. Yep, not the worst we've seen, but definitely not super smooth. Time to dry, sir. Yes, it is. We can put the pressure washer away and we can start drying. Now we're not using a drying aid on this because we will be polishing it. So there's no point. The little maybe micro marring that the towel might induce into the paint actually might shine this up. So we don't need to worry about it. Bug guts are gone from the mirror. And you notice as Nick was rinsing this off, there's no water beating behavior whatsoever on this thing. This hood is pretty grabby. It, it, yeah. uh, it's not a smooth protected surface by any means. No. 
it's now smooth because we cleaned it, but protection, uh-uh. Right, exactly, not happening. So the residual little drips that are happening, we're not really concerned about. We're gonna be using a damp pad to polish anyways, so there's no necessity to get every little drop out of here. And as we're polishing, the vibration is actually gonna bring out those little drips of water. Now you'll notice just washing it and claying it, we have a much glossier vehicle. Nick, we've washed, we've decontaminated. It's looking a lot better. But it's gonna look even better and it's gonna happen fast. Right, we're saying this is a easy to do pre-sale detail. This might be the only time you polish a car in your life. You don't need to go out and buy an expensive polisher. Random orbital sander that you might have already laying around in the garage. These are under $30 at Harbor Freight or any hardware store. You can polish the paint with this and do a really good job. We've pre-dampened the pad in the pad washer. One spray of the gold standard, not two, not three, just one. And now we're gonna polish. Now we've picked up some dirt on the pad and it's a little worse for wear. We have a couple different ways of cleaning it. If you're polishing a lot, you need this pad washer. But not all of us are polishing every day, or we might just polish once a year. We take our pad off, we dunk it in our rinseless wash. I don't wanna get my rinseless wash dirty, so I'm just gonna take this pad washer while we have it here, put it back on, and spin out the excess moisture. And in that rinseless wash bucket, it's diluted 256 to one, or one ounce of rinseless wash to two gallons of water is our standard dilution ratio when you're washing the car, and it's a great place to wash your pads as I've exaggerated. We polished the door, we polished the piano black trim. Now let's wipe off this polish and see the result. Wipe it off, couldn't be any easier. I'm using a rinseless dampened towel that easily takes off the polish residue. Again, no pressure. I'm just gliding it across the paint. And once that's done, I take a dry towel, and as they say, buff it to a shine. Is that not as you say? As, I don't know who they are, but yeah, I've said that before too, so. So the keen observers may have noticed how I'm wiping this off. And what special magic tricks are you using over there, Ivan? No magic tricks whatsoever. A rinseless stamp and towel to wipe off the polish residue, but while it's still wet with the rinseless, I'm taking ceramic gloss and using it as a drying aid. Just like you'd washed it with rinseless, right? You've got a wet panel and boom. Exactly. So it's wet, yep. you got rinseless there. So you're ready to go ahead and So a couple sprays thing. of ceramic gloss and off we go. So now we have a nice glossy finish that's gonna last a good three or four months, if not longer, if it's well maintained. And now we have shine. Especially if you've polished the paint first. I know this ceramic yeah. gloss is gonna have a lot more durability because you've put it on clean, well-prepared paint. Exactly. Just about the best thing you could do. And this mirror is a testament to why you need a ceramic coating on a vehicle. Why is that? We've cleaned it, we've polished it, we've done all sorts of things to it, and the bug guts have etched into it. There's no way other than repainting or deep wet sanding and maybe damaging it even further to get rid of those etchings. Boy, from here, the gloss is just outstanding. 
It really is. It makes me like black paint again. Yeah. And now we have a glossy, shiny, attractive looking vehicle. I think it's gonna sell, Ivan. I think we're gonna we're gonna make some money on this if we're uh, well, putting we're, it on the market, which yeah, we're not. We're not the ones selling it, but I'm sure the seller will enjoy the fact that we've done this. Now, there's a few other things you can do for pre-sale detail. One of them is this. If you have a dent like that one right there, contact a PDR guy and have that dent taken out. It's gonna cost you maybe 100, maybe $150, but the dealership, it's one less thing for them to worry about, it's one less thing for them to snag their eye on, and the value of your vehicle goes up. You mentioned paintless dent repair, Ivan. That's something that you're gonna have to hire a pro on. This is as far as you can kind of take it with your own DIY skills, and it's pretty right. dang far. As far as visual appearance goes, this vehicle does not look, what, 10 years old? No, and there's one last thing you need to do, though. That's tire lotion. The tire lotion just finishes it off, gives it that new car look, bright new tires. Is this paint perfect, Ivan? Not at all. Does it look amazing? Of course. And that's the superpower of DIY detail, is that we're unlocking a door for you to dramatically improve the appearance of your vehicle or someone else's with just a little bit of knowledge experience. And the bottom line is, you have the right chemicals, now you just have to be willing to put in a little bit of work. Right, and speaking of a little bit of work, why don't you take a look at this? We put a lot of work into it, I think it's worth your time.